as the time goes by, we realize that no one coming to save us and there's only Hamas outside. Almost a year ago, on October the 7th, people and sites across southern Israel were attacked by Hamas, prescribed as a terrorist organization by multiple governments. One of their targets was a festival, the Nova Music Festival, where thousands of young people had gathered for a rave. Tomorrow, a BBC Storyville documentary gives a harrowing insight into the assault on those people who came to dance, have fun and be with their friends. The footage that you're about to see is very upsetting. Using the testimony of survivors, CCTV and mobile phone videos, plus GoPro footage from Hamas who were live streaming, the film tells the stories of those who lived, those who were taken hostage and those who died when Hamas arrived and began to kill anyone in sight. A festival for around three and a half thousand young Israelis and other foreign nationals ended with 364 people murdered and 44 others taken hostage. Here's a short extract from the film. We're going to talk now to 25-year-old Noam, girlfriend of David. David was murdered whilst he and Noam both hid at the festival in a rubbish skip. Alongside Noam is Ben, who is 28. And one of the things he did that morning, that day, was help a mum called Moran, a mum of two young boys. He helped her to survive. Thank you very much for being with us on Newsnight and talking to our audience. I want to ask you both, first of all, why you wanted to take part in this film. May I just say for a second, I'm 28, he's 25. Just to make that sure. Did I get it but, the wrong way around? Yeah. I'm so sorry. I did check with you today and I got it the wrong way around. That's, That's okay. my fault. My apologies. But I guess the main thing that why I took part and I guess that Ben also is because we cannot sit down and be quiet about everything that happened. We have a lot of friends, even family members that are still hostage. We're not going to sit down and be quiet. And we have a huge part. And this is our mission, to be here to, to tell the world what we've been through and that no one can deny it. Like, how can people deny? So tell me, where is my boyfriend? I should be married right now. I had a life that changed just like that. Everything that I love to do, it's hard to do right now. We, we want to get our life back. So. The little that we can do is to be here and to be the next generation to, that change. And it's about humanity. Mm -hmm. It's not about war. It's about being human. Ben, what about you? To be part of this uh, explanation, it's, it's, so, it's, so, it's so important for me, for a lot of my friends that do it in Israel but it's not obvious to be here to speak in the BBC, to speak to the world, because this situation never happened to us. It's our friend, it's our family, it's people that was very, very close to us. And to be part of it and to be here in its for me, it's really, really important. I guess that we have experienced it before. We experienced um, like the war we had before, the Shoah. Uh, how do you say Shoah? Um, Holocaust. Holocaust yeah. So we had the Holocaust. We will not let this happen again, never. And we had the privilege to have phones with us. So this generation can prove things. We have another way to, to deal with it. Mm. And it's a huge, a huge thing to be 
one one of those people that can change it and to be part of this movie is is not take it for granted mm. like and the, the film, which will be out on BBC iPlayer tomorrow and BBC Two tomorrow evening, shows much of the phone footage that people like you took that day, and many others. And footage from dash cams in cars. W what prompted you to record what you were seeing, what you were hearing, what you were experiencing? To, to record these things in this situation, it's not easy, not easy at all. We, I'm, I'm remember when I start to film, I remember uh, when I running away to my car and a lot of people on me and beside me and screaming with blood and everything is like chaos and I need to be step forward and to be cold in this situation. And I see a lot of people running and I hear the, the guns, the bullets, everything. And I start my first video mm. when I picture everybody. This time I realized this is something that never happened. I live in this area and I know sometimes there is rockets and I need to get inside the shelter and I don't, don't get panic about it. But this is not something like this. This is more than that. And this is not one, two that came in from Gaza. This is a thousand. And I start to record everybody. Photo here, video there. And after that, uh, I remember when I was under the tree and I thought this is going to be my last video. And this is the video with Moran. And uh, there I, it was really quiet, just us. And from there, I start to record when I can record it, to take a picture of everything. To, it's going to be worth. It's going to be worth. And now I understand how much it's worth. I remember that David told me, why are you taking photos of what, what everything, what everything is happening? Mm. And I knew, I guess, and my body knew that this is something unusual, as Ben said. To hear a girl screaming from outside of the trash container, please leave me, don't take me, and to realize that there's a possibility to be kidnapped. It's crazy. So yeah, we want to take those footage so no one can say anything. And if you want to explain, people cannot imagine those things. In the movie, you see blood. In the movie, you see guns. In the movie, you see things like that. So it's more easier to explain what we've been through and what we experienced and everything that happened when you have something that someone can look at. Sure. And, and of course, while you Sorry, Ben, go on. No, I just want to say, in the end of the day, if you, not you, everybody, if you not be there, you never understand. And this movie, these videos, everything that we do, everything that everybody do, we try to do the best thing that you a little bit understand. To, I don't know how to explain this. This is hard, this is very hard for us. On that Saturday morning, as the sun was rising, that's when the rave began, really. Um, so the music's loud, the sky is blue, the sun is rising, people are dancing, people are happy, people are hugging each other, having the best time. Mm -hmm. I wonder, was there a point or was it a sort of very slow realisation that something wasn't right? I guess that was step by step along the way. At first, no one knew what to do. Everyone ran everywhere. Some of them even sit down and hear, listen to music. David even told me, don't get panic. Everything's going to be OK. Let's search for another open party. I, we didn't realize, but step by step, yeah, we started to get nervous. Then we hear only Arabic. We realize no one coming to save us. And we're alone in the field. Like People like Ben, like David, they took a step forward to be there and to protect the people that were with us. Mm. We were there for each other. The young generation, we have so much power in our hands and we proved that yeah. that day and we've been there to each other. And I guess that, yeah, as, as the time goes by, we realize that no one's coming to save us and there's only Hamas outside. So you do what you can for each other, which is why you, 
took the decision to help Moran, this mum of three young yeah. children. She obviously wanted to survive to get back to her kids. You didn't know her, you, you, but you stayed with her. And there were times when she was saying, you, you, you go ahead, I'm holding you back, I'm, I'm slowing you down, but you didn't. No, there is no way. I'm seriously tell this from my heart. This is how my family brought me up. Um, she look inside my eyes and tell me, I'm seriously, stop, grab me, leave me here. I'm like, I am slow you, slow you, I'm take you, well, slowing, sorry. Slowing you down, no, yeah, it's fine. I'm slowing you down. And I tell her, uh, this is not gonna happen. Like, I'm seriously right now, and I feel around me all the energy um, from the past. I was in the military service. I was um, the Kol Mechina, it's before the military. I did a lot of things in my life, and I I'm still um, remind my family, because of them, I'm like, like myself right now. And it doesn't matter for me. If it's in my life, the first thing is to help the other people because I realize that I, have, that I have power. Right now I have power. I have power physically, mind, everything. Why should I not take someone with me? Why should I not take a lot of people with me? Because I have this power. And in this time, I just... You stuck by her? I just did what I did and... Yeah. It was hard, but Moran helped me too. She is a strong woman too. Now, can I ask you what David was like? Wow. David is the biggest light I've ever seen in my life. The first day that I met David, I told him, you're an angel, you're not from here. And I guess I was right, he's my angel, but David is someone that you can meet for two seconds and you will never forget about him. This blonde, tall guy only say good things about people and therefore his family and his friends and love to live life, to celebrate life, to live life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. He taught me how to live life to the fullest. So he really gave me the power to believe that I'm a strong woman and I guess that this is my mission right now, to stay that strong woman and to be there for others. Even though since the 7th of October, we trying to recover ourselves. Yeah. And it's really hard. No sleep at night, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. But yeah, I'm saying thank you every single day for having David and to experience that amazing relationship that we had and to be able to travel seven months with him all over the world and in India and to do things that I love and to be on top of the world. So I'm trying to remember that. Yeah. Remember David always with me. He never leave me. Ben, I want to play this clip for our audience, which is from the film. And it is Moran calling your father uh, after October the 7th, and we're going to play the message. לא יכולתי לרוץ והכל, והוא לא ביקר לי, והוא לקח אותי והלכנו ארבע שעות ברגל, אם לא הוא, אני לא חושבת שהייתי יוצאת מזה. Her words are so moving and poignant. I wonder what they mean to you when you hear, hear her say she's alive because of you. Um, I remember this record very well. Um, I, I cry in this uh, record because I didn't understand what is like. Uh, there is one situation in my life that happened to me in Chile that uh, something like this happened, but when someone tell you because of you, I'm alive, 
I don't know how to call it, but goosebumps. Toosbumps. We say goosebumps. I'm seriously, yeah. I'm seriously. I have toosbumps in this moment, mm. and we talk about this a lot. I met Moran a couple of times, and I realized a lot of things about myself, a lot of things that uh, help me in these situations and help me in this life to to be uh, very focused in these situations. And when when Moran said that to my father, I'm seriously. I don't. I remember the, this moment that I help her, mm-hmm. and I don't tell to myself like um, I'm gonna be a hero or something like this. This is not the situation. No. I just did what I did yes. because I wanted it from my heart. You did that. I think that you automatically did that, and you didn't expect that. But to hear from the other side, the that you gave her life, her life back, to see her kids after this. It's amazing, and I didn't, don't think that he even realized that he had that power in his hand. Mm-hmm. So that's amazing that people like him did such thing and save others. And just imagine Moran's daughter sent me another message. Oh, yes. And this is like not record, but she write me a big message. And even this, I cry like a baby. I'm seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to ask you, finally, if I may, how do you, how are you trying to process what happened that day? I think that we can never process, but we have a huge community, the Nova community, and which we're blessed to have after this. We have, we have each other. Mm -hmm. We process it together. We have a lot of anxiety. You cannot get through this sleep not well I already told you and our life changed in just a second I went back to my parents house I don't even have a room there I need to heal my leg I needed to start walking again I was in a wheelchair so everything changed in my life even the fact that I love to paint I came as an artist David came to this party because I was invited to paint. For me, it's really hard to continue doing what I love because it brings out so much trauma, tragedy, and triggers along the day. I sometimes I don't even recognize myself. Like I have a lot of upside downs and it's a roller coaster. Yeah. And I guess that if we continue to do things, we it do. help us to feel like we stay active mm-hmm. and we're doing something. Yeah. If you don't do anything, you can stay in bed all day and cry, and we don't want to do that. We are the writer of the story and the continue of the story. It's going to be a good and strong one, and we're not going to be down. And I'm seriously, it's really not obvious to be here. Not, o- oh, not obvious to be here mm-hmm. and not obvious to speak to other people about the story. I have a lot of friends. They don't speak about the story, not want to speak about nothing. They lock in their room yeah. and don't do nothing. And in, to be in our position to speak about it, yeah, we have the, the time that we are alone and we are with our friends, but... Uh, when we're here with people and we can speak about it, this is not obvious at all. Yeah. And when I say that we will never process this until all the hostages will come back home and the families will go back to their home in Israel to live wherever they used to live and not to be in a hotel or some other place that they have their normal life. So. Hostages now bring back to Israel. This they is the need. first mission. Yeah. The first mission. First is the most important. This is why we are here to share our story, to share what we did, to share what happened, and just to let you realize how big it is yeah. and how important. Just to be hostages one year, almost one year. That's right. It's crazy. I'm going to thank you so much, both of you, Ben and Noam, for talking to our audience across the UK tonight. Thank you. Can I send one last thing? Of course. Um, Me too. I just, I just want to say, people around the world don't, un- 
understand a little bit, but not understand in the end. But just imagine, I'm seriously, imagine that you are in the party, you just want to dance. Just want to dance. That's all that you want to do. I'm a DJ, I'm a producer, I make music, this is my life. And I'm going to a lot, a lot of parties. And I, when you're in, inside the party, you're dancing with yourself, you feel the blessed man on, on the earth. Yeah. And you don't have nothing behind you, nothing to care about. And you just want to dance, you feel free. You with your fr the best friends, the best family. And like in 180 degrees in the other side, just like, that. Just like this. Everybody, wow. Our life changed up. upside yeah. down. You, saw, you just started changing. to talk about like the hour of the sun's rise and everything. You saw our smiles. We yeah, I don't know if you recognize we us right, right now, like how, how our faces was. This moment was amazing. How the, every party in the nature, when the sun get rising, it's just is the a beautiful moment, hour. the best moment and in the party. I just wanted to add a little thing. Um, we are doing things after this. Um, David's friend and I actually started this um, charity called Let's Do Something. So it is really big and it is have a really huge and positive effect in Israel. And we help the soldier and the family of the hostages and people like me that needs to get physiotherapy or psychologic. And we open a house in Thailand in Copenhagen and it's called The Circle. And I'll be more than happy if people can help us. Thank you both very much. Thank you.